What's up, YouTube? Back again with a review for Married to Medicine Season 8, Episode 16, the season finale. This is um, Jekyll Island Part 2. So before we get into this review, um, if you guys are watching this video or any other other videos on the channel and you guys are not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. So with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review, shall we? Alright you guys, so we see Anila. Anila met up with Quad and Heavily at the bar, right? So Anila, <laughs> I gotta give it to Anila. This was a good one and this was really funny. So Anila met them at the bar and Anila is ordering the most expensive bottle of, of um, you know, wine that's at the bar. And I was like, Anila, can you, I'm not being funny or shady, but can you pay for that? Anila said, no, I can't pay for this. Who's going to pay for this is going to be Lisa Nicole because we're going to put this on Lisa Nicole's room. I was like, oh, shit. Okay. I'm here for it. Like I really was. So then we see Toya and Lisa in her room <clears throat> and Toya is getting ready to, you know, have a drink. I'm like, girl, don't get too loose. While Lisa Nicole is on her phone, you know, taking some photos of herself. So Toya says to Lisa Nicole that the next time that Anila wants to talk about business at the table, tell her I'm on vacation. Honestly, I will agree with, with Toya on that one. Why are we on vacation? I'm on vacation. Let's not discuss business. Let's wait until we get back home. Then we can discuss business. But at this point, let's not discuss business. So, yeah, I'll give Toya that one. So, I'll give Toya one point and I'll give Anila one point. But actually, I'll give Anila two points because that one was clever. I don't know if I would have done that one. That one was very clever. So, hats off to Anila. Hats off to Anila. So, yeah. Um... Don't want to keep going. Yeah, let's keep going. So then we see what's going to happen with the, with the ladies for the day. So they're going to split things up. So one group of the ladies, they're going to go take a tour of Jekyll Island. So that's going to consist of Jackie. That's going to be Simone, Anila, and uh, Quad. Because at this point, Jackie and Simone want to keep Anila away from Toya and away from... Lisa Nicole, very smart. Now, toy, Quad is not going to be able to join them because Quad is on the toilet going number two. So the other ladies, which consisted of Heavenly, Lisa Nicole, Carrie. Who did it consist of? Lisa Nicole, Quad. No, Lisa Nicole, Carrie. Who else? Lisa Nicole, Carrie, Heavenly, Toya. Contessa, I think that's who it consisted of. So they're they're on this this shrimp boat, man. There is no way you would have me on that boat and tell me that we got throw this, we got to throw them right back in the ocean. I would have been over it. But overall, they all like they had a good time with each other. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So when the ladies were heading toward the shrimp boat, Contessa was talking to Heavenly, right? So you guys remember that the guys are coming down and it's only a select few guys. So the guys that are coming down is going to be Scott, it's going to be Cecil, and it's going to be Curtis. <clears throat> so Contessa asks Heavenly, is Damon coming down? She says, no, he's not coming. So then, you know, Contessa is like she's really nervous about this situation because if Scott feels cornered, he could go out the deep end and she'll get the brunt of that. Now, when she said that, my antennas kind of rose just a little bit, that she'll get the brunt of it. I was like, so is he, like, mentally, uh, mentally, emotionally, even physically, a little physically abusive? Because it was just giving me abusive tease, you know. And I'm not saying that Scott is abusive to her, towards her. I'm just saying the way that she spoke about that, it just very much said abusive to me. But let me know what you guys thought about that. <clears throat> so we see Jackie and Simone. So Jackie and Simone are talking, they're talking to Anila about her situation with uh, Toya. And they're comparing it to their situation, which I'm like, that's no comparison. Like Toya and Anila are not 20 plus year friends. You guys are. So it made sense for you two to work things out. 
Latoya and Anila, they just really became cool with each other recently. And although the stuff with, you know, the stuff with Jackie and Simone was deep, and this stuff with Anila and Toya, it's very trivial, it's very surface level, it's not that deep. Now, granted, I would feel the same way that Anila felt. Like, if you, like, don't... Actually, let's bring it back to what Toya said to Lisa Nicole. How Toya told Lisa Nicole that when Anila mentions business, don't mention it on, on I'm on vacation, you should have took your own advice, Toya. That situation with Anila could have been avoided. You could have had a conversation with Anila outside of the cameras, outside of the girls, about her not playing that makeup artist, which... I don't agree, you know, I think she should, you know, if someone does a service for you, right, you know, does a service for you, you pay them. But I don't think Toya should have blasted it. That's, what, I think that's what the issue came from. Toya blasted the shit. Let me know what you guys think about that. But yeah, the stuff with them is not the same. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so the men finally make it to Jekyll Island, and ooh, it's going to go downhill from near. <clears throat> so Scott talks to Contessa, right? And she asks him, like, what did the guys, you know, what did uh, Cecil and Curtis tell you was going on here? And he says that, you know, they just came down there to basically hang out. I'm like, that ain't what you came down there for, buddy. You came down there for a bit of an intervention, but uh, it's not going to go well. From what I can see from the previews, it's not going to go well. So then we see them there heading off to dinner, right? So they sit down and they start talking. Heavenly. You. You set things off. I, I, I will say that with Heavenly. You set it off. Do I think Heavenly could have had a different approach? Absolutely. She had a, could, have, could have had a different approach. Because she said they have some questions for Scott. He's like, y'all don't want to wait till we have drinks or nothing like that. I think there's ways of, you know, that, that that conversation could have started. There are different ways that conversation could have definitely started. And I'm trying to think of some ways that it could have started, but it could have gone a little bit better than what it did. So, Scott says every marriage has issues, which... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. I agree. And every marriage has their issues, has their own set of hiccups. That is true. Quad says, yours is in dire need at this point. And so he says that, you know, they communicate with each other. They have each other's backs. I don't know if Contessa feels that same way. Now, here's something that I've been thinking about for weeks when it comes to Contessa and Scott. When it comes to this show. Because Contessa and Scott... It's so interesting with those two. One minute they're all lovey-dovey, right? The next minute they have issues. Like, I don't understand contestants, God. I don't understand them. It's just a lot. Like, sometimes I'm wondering if Contessa and Scott are doing this to stay on, you know, keeping stuff up to stay on the show. Because when it's, what it's giving me with Contessa and Scott is giving me a whole lot of love and hip-hop. Atlanta, Rashida, and Kirk situation. It's giving me Raging and Princess. It's giving me those vibes that we're going to we're gonna drum up the drama so that way we can stay on this show. And I could be wrong. You guys can let me know. But it's just what I get from them. <clears throat> so eventually, Scott and Contessa got up from the table and went to their room and when they left to go to their room I was looking at Contessa and that was once again when that whole thing came to me it's like she looks like that looks like a woman that is I'm not saying physically abused but there's some it just feels like someone has been abused emotionally mentally I'm not I'm not trying to say that that's what he does but it gives that vibe but let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So, yeah, here 
in my notice system. To be honest, this is kind of scary. It gives me very low key of vibes. So I get Scott where he's coming. I got that he felt ambushed. I did get that, but the fact that Curtis was trying to sit there and make excuses, especially when the lady said that he has a life coach that Contessa doesn't know about, and that the fact that the baby is saying that Scott has a girlfriend. For Curtis to sit there and try to basically, I feel, excuse that saying you only hear one side. If Contessa says that the baby, which we saw on the camera, that the baby said his girl, Scott's girlfriend, that's not one-sided. We heard that. I really wish that Curtis was, would have shut his mouth, just keeping it real with you guys. I wish he would have minded his business and shut up. So then Heavily and Quat, they get up, so they go to the room to check on Contessa and Scott, right? And Contessa tells them that, you know, she's good. And they call Scott in and ask him about this life coach and the baby saying he has a girlfriend. He never addressed that one, but he did address the life coach situation. So with the life coach, he says he doesn't have a, 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 a woman as a life coach. He said that, you know, um, with the life coach situation, he has a male that's a life coach. And his name is Kevin Johnson. I'm in agreement with Heavenly and Quad. You Well, Heavenly, I think, is the one that said this. You couldn't just pull that name out of thin air. But whatever. So then the next day, we see Carrie. So Carrie goes to Toya's room. Now, I did see a tweet from Contessa earlier this week where she went off on Carrie about this scene. So, Carrie tells Toya that she was awoken to Contessa and Scott, you know, going off on each other, screaming. And they're screaming about naked pictures and the fact that women are sending him naked pictures. He says that he's not asking for them. But even if you're not asking for them, if someone sends you a naked picture to your phone, why are you keeping it? That's a problem. I don't care who asked for it. If someone, if I'm married and my relationship is not open, then don't send me naked pictures. One, I'm going to delete the pictures. Two, I'm going to block you. But number, the, the next question is, how did you meet this person? You obviously gave this person your phone number. Like, there are a lot of big red flags with this one. A lot of red flags. This story just gets interesting and interesting, right? So, Toya and Carrie go over to Contessa and Scott's room. So, Scott lets them in, but he leaves. So, Scott goes down to the bar where the men are, right? And they're talking. And, you know, Scott tells um, them that, you know, Heavenly and Contessa came by. Heavenly and Quad came by. He let them in, and they were like, I want to let... Well, Curtis said he wanted to let them in. So, then he says, you know, just a few minutes ago... Toy and Carrie came to the room and I left. So, like I said earlier, I feel like Curtis with this situation, Curtis, it would be better for you to just shut up and, you know, be quiet because it just doesn't, <clears throat> this doesn't look good on any level to me. No, nothing about this looks good because like I said a minute ago, you obviously gave this woman your phone number. Even if you didn't solicit the text of her naked, she sent them. You still kept them. I don't know if you kept them in a thread, in the thread, or if you saved them to your um your camera roll. Either way it go, it's wrong and it's jacked up. Like, like there's no nothing good can come out of this. Again, like I said, I think Curtis should have minded his business. So then we see the next day as everyone's getting ready to leave, right? And Lisa Nicole found out that she had a $600 balance. Why did Lisa Nicole pull a whole Karen? And the fact that Carrie told her she was pulling a Karen was ridiculous. You making this big fuss about the fact that Anila charged $600 to that room. Oh, I'm going to call the police. Girl, it ain't that deep to call the police, first and foremost. But, um, yeah, that's it, you guys. We move over to the reunion. The reunion is three parts, you guys. But, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Share this video. And until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Socially distance. 
If you choose not to wear masks, be safe and be blessed, you guys. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. If this will turn itself off.